Good morning and welcome to Good Morning Glendale. This is Robert Height, President and CEO of the Glendale Chamber. And today I have the honor and privilege of sitting down and visiting with the one and only, the Honorable Mayor Jerry Wires. Welcome, Mr. Mayor. Good morning, Robert. How are you? I don't think you need much introduction because I think as you are um, as active as you are in the business community, I don't know that anyone wonders who you are. Occasionally I'll get someone who'll say, who's that gentleman? And then when they figure out it's the mayor, they kind of have that deer in headlights look, but you're a well-known figure and uh, active in the community. So I just want to take a few minutes with you today, Mr. Mayor, get the pulse, get a check from you, kind of where you're at. First, let's start off with you just won your, re -elect your re-election. You're going to do your third term as mayor of Glendale. Congratulations. Um, now that that's behind you, and now you can focus on all the great things ahead, uh, we know the journey where you began as mayor and the city being maybe not in the best financial situation. I think the chamber and city, as we've talked about before, have, we're in the same boat. We're in a much different place today, better bond ratings, much more economic development, that sort of thing. So as you're looking into that next um, chapter of your mayoral duties, what are you hoping to see or achieve now that you've got your reelection behind you the next four years? I, you know, I, a lot of people ask that question and I think they're surprised by my answer because quite honestly, what we've been able to do the last four years, a little over four years, uh, if something works and it's working really, really well, why would you ever change it? And so uh, what we're actually doing is we're just keeping our foot on the pedal. We're not, we're not slowing down one bit. Uh, we've got uh, an incredible amount of economic development that's happening right now. Uh, not just out at the 303 corridor, that's really where the bulk of it is, but quite honestly, all over Glendale. Uh, you know, I tell people, and I've been saying this, you've heard me say this many, many times, uh, you know, the fastest growing county in the United States is Maricopa County. The epicenter of that growth happens to be Glendale. And uh, the amount of people moving here, uh, again, I was seeing some reports last night, uh, the, the sheer amount of people that are moving from the large cities, uh, New York, uh, California, different places, uh, moving to Arizona because they like the lifestyle we have here. They like uh, the, the opportunities that are available in Arizona. The climate certainly uh, has, is good nine months out of the year. The last three months have been pretty tough. There's no doubt about that. But, uh, uh, you know, you, you can... Uh, you can get a lot accomplished in Arizona. There's a lot of opportunities available, but uh, our economic development really is our driving factor right now. Job opportunities, quality of life. Uh, really, it's a it, it's been pretty a unique experience being being mayor of a, a city that. Uh, and you said seven and a half years ago, a second meeting I had the day after I was sworn in, uh, they took me into a small room and asked me to declare bankruptcy for the city. The only city worse shape than Glendale was Detroit, Michigan, and they in fact did go bankrupt. Uh, we had less than zero in our savings account. We actually owed debt on our savings account. I don't even know how that's even possible. Uh, today we've excel excelled, I'm sorry, uh, exceeded over $50 million in our savings account. Uh, so a lot of great things happening. We've got, I think, an incredible management staff. We've got a great economic development uh, a team. And we've got a, a fantastic working relationship with uh, you, the Glendale Chamber of Commerce. And, uh, and businesses want to go where they see success and success is here. Well, I, I, I agree with you. We've, we've come a long way in just a few short years. As mayor, you um, have the opportunity to be a part of many different things, committees, task force, boards, uh, you name it throughout the state and, and you represent us well. Um, if there was one thing that came to mind that you're most proud of, what would that be uh, since you've taken over as mayor Glendale? I know it's probably hard to think of just one, but uh, just one for us. Well, right now, the, the, the latest thing is I just won my election, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. I, That's fair. I, I have to tell you, uh, uh, unlike when I was in the legislature in the House of Representatives, uh, uh, right behind me on the wall, I have a, a, a plaque on uh, a bill that I worked on for three years, almost three years, that it took me to get a single bill passed that made a difference in a few people's lives. Here at the city, each and every day, we do things each and every day that make a positive difference in people's lives. Uh, and, and, and I'm afforded that opportunity as mayor when I get to do the nonprofit things, our Christmas parade, our stand up for veterans, the induction ceremony, all the different things that we get to do that we see a direct impact immediately. 
the thing that stands out uh, uh, right now, and, and I was uh, told that uh, we were nominated uh, for the Glendale Works. Uh, uh, Glendale Works is something where we're taking people that uh, are homeless, uh, some by no fault of their own, uh, other bad circumstances, but uh, we're able to uh, get people the help they need uh, and instantly make a difference in their lives. Uh, it's been so successful that the program is over doubled in size. Wow. It costs us less money for our taxpayers. We're getting more things done and we're changing people's lives for the good. I'm very, very proud of it. And uh, you know, if you ever have a legacy, uh, my legacy I hope is uh, when I'm long gone, people go, you know, there's a guy that cared about his community and wanted to make a difference. Well, I couldn't agree with you more. I think that um, there's been many great things. That's certainly one of those. Uh, there's been many great accomplishments uh, so far uh, under your leadership and for the city and many great things to come. Um, the one thing I've always said is you're very philanthropic. You do a lot for the community. Um, you're a hands-on mayor. So if someone was looking for a mayor that was just a suit and tie and kind of polished, that's, that's not Mayor Jerry Wires. Jerry Wires is sometimes boots on the ground, getting his hands dirty, getting out there. I've watched you in a way of visionary to um, just sometimes get in the car and go figure it out and look and talk to people and figure out the solution then sit behind the desk at City Hall. So you're a very hands-on mayor, very engaged and involved, raise a lot of money um, to support great worthy causes in our community nonstop. Um, I, don't, I don't know any other mayor that I've ever seen do that except you. So uh, we appreciate that because it enriches the community. Um, uh, you know, Robert, I, you say that and you, you got me thinking. I, I was criticized a couple of days ago. Uh, somebody had asked me during this COVID-19, is there anything you as mayor specifically has been doing for the community other than just what mayor is doing? I said, well, uh, yeah. I said uh, a few months ago, we actually sent uh, specialized text messages out to our citizens from from me uh, basically saying if you need something if you're unable to to get something if, if if you're having problems contact me let me know if there's a way i can help you um when you were talking a, a couple minutes ago you made me think of that i got a text message from a woman that said uh, I'm, I'm having a problem with my, my arcadia door it's stuck and, and, and I'm going, well, I'm not a doorman, but, but I'm really handy with my hands. I, you know, I, I understand mechanics and tools. And, uh, and so I, uh, I called her up and I said, what's going on? She said, our, our Acadia door is off the track and, and we're both senior citizens and we can't move it. And, uh, and it's letting the hot air in. And, uh, and I said, well, send me your address. And I actually went over and put her Arcadia door back on the track. Now, is that something that I'm going to advertise? No, I'm not going to advertise it, but you know, I do believe in servant leadership. I truly do. Uh, you know, during the COVID-19, I, I, I worked out a deal with some uh, department store uh, where they allowed me to, or grocery stores allowed me to buy uh, toilet paper and paper towels. Uh, and I was delivering it to people's homes, people that, uh, you know, were embarrassed the fact that they couldn't get toilet paper. And, and, you know, we think about it now and we kind of laugh about it, but at that time, you know, that was pretty important to those people. Yeah. And I had, if I had that opportunity uh, to do it, why wouldn't I? I had a lady that, uh, whose daughter desperately needed medication in Utah that was left here and, uh, and she wasn't able to come home. And so I went to the house, picked it up, took it to a, a FedEx and, and, and mailed it for her. So, uh, you know, do I think that's uh, or, uh, unordinary? No, I think, it's, I think it's what all mayors should be doing if they have the ability to do that. And I understand that uh, there's some cities where, uh, you know, it's it's basically impossible. But I understand that there's very very small cities, who mayors have been doing this for years. This is nothing new. It's it's normal. Yep, and I agree with you. I've watched you do it firsthand. I think I've been with you a few times when you just jump in the car and you're ready to go do it. So um, no doubt about that. You know, a question, the, the, the finances have improved in the city. There's been a lot of great strategic decisions in the leadership between the staff and council of trying to move the city forward. Um, one of the big things that comes down to helping our city get funded is the census. Um, the deadline is September 30th. Um, if you could just take maybe just a quick moment to tell the impact of what that means to the city um, when people complete that census. Well, um, I'm, I'm glad you asked that, uh, and, and I would I would hope that uh, most people that are, are viewing this uh, have already taken their census, have already done that. Uh, it's almost three thousand dollars a person that it literally affects the city of Glendale. Uh, 
we don't know exactly how many people are in the city. And so when we're looking at funds for lots of different things, for medical, for schools, for public safety, uh, for roads, all the different things that the federal government provides taxes, they do that based upon populations. Uh, we know that our population is, uh, uh, we're certain it's over a quarter of a million, but we couldn't tell you if it's 260,000. We couldn't tell you if it's 240,000. We don't know exactly. We, we suspect that we think it's around 254, 255,000. But again, imagine 10,000 people at $3,000 a piece of taxable, uh, I'm sorry, of taxes of, of revenues that can come into the city to help with those things that make a difference in people's lives. Again, the roads, the child care, uh, hospitals, all the different things that, uh, that money's going somewhere. We need to get our fair share of it. So I agree. It, it, it's important. And so the more people that can get out there and do that. Right. Um, uh, and then uh, if I might add one more thing to it, uh, our, our biggest problem right now is uh, they actually cut the time down for the census down one month. So it's been short. Our window is much smaller. Uh, at this point, we've got less than 30 days uh, to get this done. And, uh, and where we run into problems is uh, typically with uh, minorities, uh, people that uh, uh, don't speak English, and a lot of people that, whether they're here legally or not here, the fact is they're here, okay? So if you have people using facilities, using uh, the roads, using the hospitals, using the parks, we need to make sure everybody is counted. So again, our city, our taxpayers can get their fair share of that. So if you know somebody, uh, ask them, have you done the census? If they haven't, it's a very easy, very easy process. People will be coming to your door. Uh, they'll never ask for your social security number. They'll never ask for, for anything. They'll have a, an ID that shows their name shows the census, they'll be carrying a, a bag with them that says U.S. Census. Uh, don't be afraid to talk with them. There's only, I think, 10 questions and they're very easy questions. Very, very, very critical that we make sure everybody takes the census, gets it done quickly. It absolutely has a profound impact. I already know that ring. Uh, I know that ring too well. Okay, so real quick, because I've got a couple more things that I want to get, and I know you maintain a busy calendar, and I think you spent the entire day in Zoom meetings yesterday, and I believe your calendar is probably just as jam-packed. So we've had some great conversations, some uh, heartfelt moment conversations, some you know, deep, like, what's going to happen here next? If you had to share from your perspective, what would be one piece of advice that you'd share out with, whether it's our members or those who would listen, what would be that negative uh, wisdom, that pearl of wisdom that you would share out there with the, with the community? The pearl message? Uh, uh, just a, just a, a word of wisdom that you have, that you, you stand by, you kind of guide yourself by. I, well, I, uh, I think that everybody needs to understand, uh, no matter how bad things get, if, uh, if, if you can uh, make yourself slow the process down a little bit, usually 24 hours, it's amazing on how things, your perspective can change within 24 hours. Uh, this COVID-19 has been tough on a lot of people. Uh, everybody that, that I have talked with, I think all agree that this is probably the worst year that any of us have ever lived through. Uh, and, uh, you know, not saying that this type of thing hasn't happened before, but it hadn't happened in my lifetime and most of the people I know. Uh, you know, you have to keep thinking positive things. Uh, you know, I live my life and has always lived. I always try to think the very best and I always try to plan for the very worst. So, uh, you know, is COVID-19 over? No, it's not over. Is it getting better? I think so. But uh, I'm gonna hope like heck that it gets better. I'm, I'm, I'm moving forward, uh, planning a Christmas parade that I believe that we will have. At the same time, I'm not going to let my, my toilet paper supply drop. Uh, we're going to try to make sure that we're, we're, we're covered and protected. But, uh, uh, you know, you have to keep the faith. And, and that's, the, that's the one thing I, I tell people all the time. I, you know, some people um, I know that I, I you know, I, I have a, a lot of faith, uh, you know, belief. And I, and I believe that you, you're never given more than you can handle. Uh, but you have some control over that yourself. Sometimes you just have to make yourself slow down a little bit. Uh, if, if things are depressing and bad, uh, just sit back and wait 24 hours. If you're getting ready to buy a car that you think is the coolest car ever, wait 24 hours. Maybe tomorrow you might not think that's the coolest car. But uh, and I think that comes with gray hair. 
you, you learn to just slow the process down a little bit and you find that you tend to make more better decisions. You're right. I think it's a, a good message. I think we've had some of those conversations and sometimes a good night's sleep is all someone needs, um, but it comes with wisdom and time and experience in that. Um, two quick things. Uh, one is, you know, we're going to be launching where we're launching Good Morning Glendale series and we'll have this many other times and go out to other businesses. So I invite you to go with me whenever you'd like or if there's things that you want to cover. I'd like to uh, strategize with you on that because again, this is about connecting with our community and who else uh, to do an excellent job is you. You're the ambassador of the city I mean, everyone knows who you are. You're the face of it. Um, but two quick things. One is I'd be remiss if I didn't say that behind you as the mayor is a great support team, not in the staffing or through the other council, um, but through your lovely wife, Sandy, um, who I think you both just celebrated birthdays. Um, so with that, I have to say well, she's your home boss, right? Yeah, so she's in a couple of days. Yeah, okay, so yours was hers a couple of days. I knew it was right at the same time. So she's your home boss. So we wanna make sure that you're following her orders and making sure you're keeping Sandy happy or if not, you get in, 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 in a little bit of hot water there. Um, because we know she's a, a great support system for you there. Um, she's e at your side and equally involved in, in many things. So I'd be remiss if I didn't give a shout out to her because I think without her support, you might not be able to, you, you certainly probably would do it because you're very determined, but it makes it much easier having Sandy on your side uh, in order to keep you on the straight and narrow there to go, keep everything moving forward. Well, uh, there, there's no doubt about it. For anybody that's, that's uh, engaged in any type of politics, uh, that support behind him is huge, whether whether it's a husband or a wife or or, or a girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever. But, uh, you know, Sandy and I uh, have been married 38, 38 years now. Like, wow, it's a long time, awful long time. And she puts up with me. And so, uh, you know, she, she certainly gets the Saint Award. There's no doubt about that. But uh, very, very supportive. And, and she does believe in, in what I'm trying to accomplish. And it makes my life a lot easier. I agree. I think she's she's a, she's a great support system. So before we go, I know we could go on forever. You and I could probably sit and talk for hours we have, but what would you like to share out? Anything that I didn't ask today that you'd like to kind of close with or uh, parting as we head, head our directions today? Um, thoughts, perspectives that you have on anything that's going on? Well, I, again, I, I want people to keep that positive attitude. We're all in this together. Uh, this is not easy for any of us, but uh, what we're getting through it, uh, you, all you have to do is watch TV, watch the, watch the reports right now. The numbers are, are, are getting much, much better. Uh, we're, we're, on, we're on this trajectory right now that uh, is really setting Glendale apart. And uh, anybody that's part of this chamber, part of this city uh, here in the West Valley, uh, things, are, things, are, things are going the right direction. So uh, my office is always available for, for uh, if you have questions, uh, we certainly will try to get you answers. If we don't have the answer, we certainly probably know somebody that does. And, uh, uh, you know, on, on the other part of that, Robert, you know that I've got my business of the week. If you're a Glendale business and uh, uh, you're reputable, uh, don't hesitate to call me out and say, hey, we want to be a Glendale business of the week. Uh, let us know and, and uh, we'll review it. And if we can make it happen, we'll certainly do it. And it costs nothing. It's another way that I can... I can help promote your business too. So if you're not in Glendale and you're in another city, think about moving to Glendale and being business the week. Well, we love all businesses, so we'll take them all. So with that, Mr. Mayor, we want to thank you. We want to thank everyone for tuning in to Good Morning Glendale. We know we'll see the mayor back with us again and maybe doing an uh, interview with us of someone in our community. So thank you to everyone here in our community, our members. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we appreciate the partnership that we have with you and your office. Um, and you're right. We're in this together and working together. We'll be stronger and we'll come out of it. So with that, folks, thank you very much. And hopefully you have a great day. Any final thoughts, Mr. Mayor? Uh, you folks have a great day. Thank you. All righty. Thank you.